Kicking off the list at number 10, formaldehyde. You may have heard this one before at one point or another, but formaldehyde is all over your house. Spoiler alert. You might just not know it. It's commonly found in cleaning products, lotions, cosmetics, lots of shampoos, definitely a lot of shampoos. Next time your phone's dead and you catch yourself reading the back of those labels and you're doing one of these, keep an eye open for this one. Formaldehyde is a strong smelling colorless gas, also commonly found in building materials. So it's in there, which is here, and also over there. Not great, don't breathe that in. It's literally in your home you can find this stuff. It's in plywood, glues. Formaldehyde is also found in tobacco smoke. So next time you're breathing in that secondhand smoke, remember that and be like, sorry guys, <coughs> I don't smoke. You don't, you don't have to do it like that sassy, but you know, just let them know. A study found that higher levels of formaldehyde are bound to the DNA in white blood cells if you do smoke. So if you need another reason to quit, there it is. Number nine, flame retardants. The less house fires we have, the better, right? That's where flame retardants come in. They are these chemicals added to furniture so that if a fire were to start, it wouldn't act as fabulous flint. Instead, these retardants are added to slow it down. You can't drop a lit cigarette on your couch and then 34 seconds later, you don't have a home anymore. You can't be doing that, all because you nodded off, no way. Since the 70s, these were added to furniture and you can find it now in mattresses, couches, blinds, curtains, carpets, anything that looks cozy, essentially, odds are it's very flammable. While it's great that we're not starting fires as much, we're still hurting the environment now. Many flame retardants have been removed from the process because they don't break down after their initial use. These chemicals can build up in people or animals over time. It's not good, you don't want any of that here. Number eight, chloroform. This one we've heard about also in one way or another, we've seen it in movies and stuff. Chloroform, if you inhale this, you're going to sleep quite fast, it's no good. Is chloroform out there just hidden in plain sight? I included it in this list, this is kind of concerning. Well, according to the EPA, yes, chloroform is out there all around us, but don't worry about getting knocked out on your way to work, it's not that strong. Chloroform is often released into the air through bodies of water. It's the chlorination of wastewater, pools, and breathing it in can lead to liver problems. Chloroform is created when chlorine mixes with organic compounds. Back in 2002, there was a study done to measure the levels of chloroform in public swimming pools, and there was enough of the chemical to link to miscarriages. Yeah, not great. Number seven, non-ill phenols. Remember the Tide Pod challenge when you know we had to launch a global campaign to get adults not to chew on laundry detergents? That was a good time, that was classic. Don't do that. If you're thinking about it and you've ever thought about it, don't. I don't know what you need to see don't ever do that. Well, those common deadly substances, as we all learned about via Twitter, was non-ilphenols. They're more often than not found in laundry detergent or other hygiene products that we don't eat. Don't eat any hygiene products, period. The EPA has discovered that this chemical can lead to reproductive problems in rodents. A huge concern for the release of these chemicals is also in the aquatic system. NP, its shorter name, which I should have brought up at the beginning of this point, has also been detected in human breast milk, urine, and blood. Number six, triclosan. Now we gotta worry about toothpaste harming us. Come on, that's not cool. Brushing is more fun than ever these days with the whole, you know, charcoal toothpaste. What a time to be alive. We love trendy mouth care. The antimicrobial chemical triclosan has been banned by the FDA, and it's an ingredient often added to consumer products in order to reduce bacterial contamination. And it was often found in soaps, body washes, cosmetics, and toothpaste. Now it's been removed from most of this stuff, but in a 2017 study by the journal Environmental Science and Technology, triclosan can build up over time on your toothbrush. You know, while sitting in that dirty SpongeBob SquarePants coffee mug that you've had for 17 years. Yeah, give it a rinse maybe. It builds up and over time it can absorb into your bloodstream every time you brush, putting your gut and hormones at risk. It's actually highly toxic to fish, even though Canada's federal health and environment ministries say that it's safe for humans. It's not great. Aquatic organisms are at risk here. Stop. I'm like, stop brushing your teeth? I don't know the solution here. I don't know that much. I can tell you what it is, but I don't know the solution. Comment down below. Number five, DEET. Being a Canadian, I'm forced into the outdoors a lot. Friends with cottages always want to go up, and I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. I'll stay in the water the entire time or inside. Yeah, I'll just beat them and be like, I'm not going outside, I'm a Sudoku guy now. Just to avoid mosquitoes, I don't like it, I can't do it. And I know I'm not alone here, I just hold on to the bug spray the entire time of the entire trip. That ingredient used to keep those pests away is called DEET. Now on one hand, it wards away whatever's trying to take a bite from you, but on the other hand, literally, if you use enough of it, you'll develop rashes. DEET toxicity isn't common, it usually happens when you fool around with this kind of stuff, spray it into your mouth or your eyes and stuff like that. Enjoy the outdoors, I guess, but do so responsibly. Also, if you go outside and you like outside, just stop. Be inside, play video games, be a hermit. It's too cold out there. 
I don't like it. Number four, poison ivy. They always say leaves of three, let them be, but you know what I say, if you're not sure, don't touch anything in the world ever. That's my rule, you can follow that. It doesn't rhyme yet, but we'll work on it. Poison ivy is found all over the United States, more commonly in the Eastern states, and we of course have lots up here in Canada. I've been a victim to poison ivy before. I'll tell you, it only takes one time. The itchy rash that you get after you touch that part of the plant is caused by urushi oil. Now this oily resin is stored in the leaves. Now one time, my friend put that leaf and rubbed it all over his face because it was like a hairy leaf and he was intrigued by this. He was like, oh, it's soft, so I'm gonna do this. Yeah, he went to the emergency. His face was didn't look great. The scariest thing I ever seen. Don't touch poison ivy. Also, don't inhale smoke from this plant too. If you're thinking about burning it, and maybe that'll solve the problem, sure, but just plug your nose and run far away. Also, don't light any fires, please. Thanks. Number three, holly. Tis the season. Okay, let's talk about it. When I hear about holly or jolly and or holly and jolly, I think of something delicious, right? All the songs, it's like I have a holly jolly Christmas. It's like, mmm, yummy. These are not delicious. If you're seeing red looking berries anywhere, just don't eat them. The American holly is pretty common. It's actually now an ornament for the holidays. The American holly, AKA the Ilex opaca, is a tasty treat for birds, but if you see them eating these berries, don't copy them. They can eat poison pellets all day long and be fine. They can fly. Can we fly? No, don't eat berries. If we ingest holly, we're welcoming an alarming amount of toxins. One being illicin, which is a good way of you know vomiting and having nausea and all that nasty normal stuff. Now normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this because it's not too bad or common, but like I said, tis the season. Number two, asbestos. Have you ever made the leap of faith and explored your own attic? You get the broom and push it up and you're like, I know it, there's ghosts in there, I feel it, I hear them at night. It's usually creepy, Dark, cold, and boring. It's just a wall of pink fluff, usually pink insulation. Asbestos is a natural mineral made of these thin fibers, and its primary use was for fireproofing, and its origins and use date back to the first century. It was used mainly as an insulator, and due to its fibers being so fine and heat resistant, that's why it looks all fluffy, it could be added to cement, paper, or cloth, you name it, in order to make them more durable. Its dangers weren't widely known until the late 80s, that's when the EPA banned the use of asbestos. That's because if you breathe it in, you're getting lung cancer. Essentially, not all the time, but you're definitely opening the door to lots of lung cancer. Houses built before the 80s have a higher chance of exposure to asbestos hiding in your walls, and most importantly, your insulation. It's a rare type specifically due to asbestos insulation called mesothelomia. More than 39,000 Americans lost their lives a year because of asbestos related disease, so it's pretty common. Also, another reason to not go in your attic. There you go, you can tell them I sent you. Number one, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard of this before? It's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes these contaminated waters, which leads to arsenic poisoning. That's how it happens, it comes from the ground. So most of the time, what you're getting out of this whole deal is skin cancer. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams, so the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a top dog. Exposure to toxic metals is still a common problem that we're facing today. We can find arsenic in seafood, rice, or cereal now. So keep your eye open. Yeah, you think finding shrimp tails in your cereal is horrible enough, now we gotta worry about arsenic. It comes naturally from water, soil, and bedrock, most commonly in the Midwest, United States, and areas of Texas. And at one point in time, they used to make arsenic dresses. It was like green colored dresses. It was really flammable, and it was green, and it just was all bad. If you inhaled it, you were just getting poisoned. You'd foam with the mouth, your eyes would turn green. It was bad. Arsenic, terrible. Kicking off the list at number 10, Blister Beetle. Great name, right off the bat. Sounds like a DC Comics super villain. Blister beetle, ugh. These little guys are coated in cantharidin. Back in the day, medical experts would use cantharidin to induce blisters. That was a common remedy. Painful, of course, but quite common. Blister beetles are tiny, and they often sport a metallic green or blue wing cover. They look great, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna touch these guys. If a bird tries to eat one of these, it's gonna get ugly pretty quick. It's, that beetle will not stay down. That beetle will come right back up immediately and then continue on his beetle way. On the outside, cantharidin causes a dermatitis reaction. And if you accidentally eat one of these, just like that bird, it's most likely gonna be your last meal. Yeah, don't eat bugs, period. Let's move on. Number nine, tarantula hawk wasp. T 
okay, there's another name. Remember when we had to worry about killer wasps for like three months? Is that still a threat? Are they still out there? Is that a false alarm? Can we get some follow up please? Well, here's a wasp that you definitely want to avoid. I'll tell you this one for free. The tarantula hawk wasp. As if its name wasn't horrifying enough, let's talk about it. These wasps are so huge, for starters, they have bright orange wings, long legs, their bodies reach about two inches long, which is horrible already, and they're found all over the world, except for Europe. So if you live there, nice, must be nice. No giant wasps to worry about. No Tony Hawk wasps, so I gotta come in and bite you. They're most commonly found in the Grand Canyon, believe it or not. Yep, they just hang out there and eat tarantulas. Great, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. It has one of the worst stings on the planet. Its pain was described as instantly debilitating. See, bullet ant stings, they can last 24 hours and they suck. These ones, they only last five minutes. But it's ranked as the highest on the pain index. So I have to ask, would you rather have the worst pain for five minutes or just a really, really bad pain for 24 hours? Chris? Five minutes. Five minutes, me too. Just get it done with, you know? I don't wanna wait, like hour six, I'd be like, oh, please, this sucks. Number eight, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Dynamite. What happened? What were they doing? Were they sniffing around? What are they doing? What is arsenic and why have we all heard about this before? Well, arsenic is incredibly toxic in its inorganic form. Arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes contaminated water, which leads to arsenic poisoning. So most of the time, you'll develop skin cancer from it. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances still. It's still a top dog. It's still a problem. Exposure to toxic metals is a common problem we're still facing today. We're not out of the woods yet, so had to throw it on this list. It sounds old though, right? It's like, oh, arsenic and old lace. Nope, very real. King George III is like, it's, I can tell you, it's real. Number seven, the Indian red scorpion. Scorpions are extremely underrated. These things are like lobsters mixed with snakes, mixed with spiders, just packed full of venom. It's actually horrible. I'm glad I've never seen one in real life even in a zoo or anything. I've never seen a scorpion. I just realized that, wow, okay. Indian red scorpions are of course found in India, and they're also found in Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. They're the most venomous out of the entire scorpion species. The fatality rate is around 40% if you get hit by one of these. So even if you don't die, it's gonna suck. I don't know how else to say that. You'll know if it's an Indian red scorpion because you'll start to sweat like crazy right off the bat. You'll start throwing up, you'll start convulsing, and most likely your body will immediately shut down. It's all physical stuff. You'll pass out, so maybe you won't know if you get bit. Their venom is also on the science side. Yeah, scientists are trying to figure out a way to fight cancer with it, so we don't hate them completely. You know, we're like, hey, stop it, but come here. What are you doing? Let me, let me study you. Don't bite me, but let me see your <laughs> Number six, Black Widow. Another scary bum, another natural scary bum you want to avoid. We've all heard about this one at some point, but just how bad is the Black Widow? Like, will you die? Yeah, probably. The Black Widow is not only extremely painful, but it's also incredibly toxic. At first, you won't even feel anything. You might think you were hit by a mosquito, if that. There'll be slight irritation on the skin, nothing too bad, nothing like the red scorpion. You won't notice at first. But then an hour goes by, you'll start to be confused, you'll be dizzy, you'll be nauseous, your breathing will become difficult, all because of this little thing right here. And her little butt, her little evil butt. See, male Black Widows are much smaller and contain much less venom than the female. Yeah, see, ladies are bad, Chris, they're bad news. A fact that you may have heard already, but I have to mention it, of course, is that the female black widow will actually begin eating the male while they're doing their, you know, spider mating thing. Could you imagine that? How, like, I trusted you, and now you're eating me? Get out of here. This event, this horrible event, is called Lactrodectus Mirabilis. Yeah, it sounds like a Harry Potter dark magic spell. It's when you, you know, Little midnight snack. Number five, the hooded patui. I bet you didn't expect a bird to be on this list. Yeah, too busy looking down. Now we gotta look up too. I already don't like birds, this is so scary. The hooded patui sounds mysterious. Why is he wearing a hood? He's wearing a hood because he lives in the rainforest. That's why, of course. These little guys, I'll admit, they're pretty cute. They have an orange red chest with a dark black head. They're beautiful birds that are found mainly on the island of New Guinea. Now some say this bird is scary looking. I mean, I think that's just a, negate people from going towards them. I disagree, it's a cute bird. But you should still avoid the hooded patui. If you see these things, just honestly, duck. I don't know what to do, duck, hide. Its skin and feathers are covered in a neurotoxin called homobatrachotoxin. If this bird landed on your shoulder and started to whisper secrets in your ear, I mean, sure, you're gonna feel like a Disney princess for a hot minute, but eventually those toxins will start to cause numbness, even just skin contact. These birds are literally taking baths in radioactive puddles. Their neurotoxins come from the beetles that they eat. And you know which beetles I'm talking about, right? 
you're too good. Number four, comb stars. Ocean life is the scariest thing out there. We're talking about beetles and birds. Yeah, let's look into the sea. This is a nightmare already by itself. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy, crazy fascinating fish every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence, like a glowing shark. We have a new glowing shark. How amazing is that? Some are small but mighty natural predators, like the comb star, for example. The comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin. It's this deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Imagine having this guy in Finding Nemo. That'd be a quick movie. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have 500 mice, don't let this guy in your house. Also, what do you do for a living? Number three, ricin. This deadly chemical can be found in the seeds of castor oil plants. It looks jarringly similar to table salt. That's the biggest ha about this. And an extremely small amount can take you out. It was also the biggest villain in Breaking Bad, really. He sat there silently for seasons at a time, just waiting waiting for his moment. They also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't gonna run into any ricin in the wild. You know, there's more steps that need to be done before you accidentally poison yourself in mere minutes. So don't worry too much. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells and then prevents them from making the proteins that they need. That's bad news. You're pretty much toast at that point. Depending on if you inhale, ingest, or inject it, the results may vary. Either way though, it's, it's not gonna feel good. Georgi Markov, he got taken out by a ricin attack back in 1978. It was a small pellet. He had no clue. It's horrible. So deadly. Number two, the blue ringed octopus. You can look, but you most certainly should not touch. In fact, don't even look at this one. I take that back. If you see this thing, you're already too close. Swim away. Get out of there, man. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in the waters of Australia and Japan. And sometimes they're not even in the water. Yeah, how fun is that? Surprise. If need be, these little guys can walk over rocks into another part of the ocean to avoid danger. Otherwise, they use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor, which is so alien by itself. They're also believed to be the only other species that dreams. Of course, changing colors while they do so to make them look even more dazzling. The blue ringed octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults with an attack. 26. They're filled with two different types of venom in case one was too boring for you. The first can kill their prey while the other can be used as a defense. Either way, this toxin is bad, bad news. They don't get very large too, so watch your toes next time you're walking in hashtag paradise. Number one, poison dart frog. I saved the cutest for last. Yeah, you'd never expect this little guy to be the absolute deadliest frog on the planet. But look at that smile. He's hiding something. You can just tell. Frogs look so mysterious. They're just they're always so wet. That's the sound they're making. If it's name didn't tip you off already, the poison dart frog is one of the deadliest animals on Earth. Its shiny yellow skin will certainly attract the eye, but if you decide to you know, catch one of these slippery boys, its poison will, you're, you're absolutely done. Its poison can kill many, many, many adults. Indigenous hunters figured this out early and they coated the tips of their arrows or darts in this exact toxin. They would just grab a frog and be like, hm, thank you, see ya. He's like, he's part of the war, he's helping. The toxin created here is called batrotoxin. Another animal that has it was the hooded patui. Yeah, so many animals have this. I'm always like hiding them from you and then pulling them out later. There's literally poison everywhere. Thanks for watching, that's a good time right there. Starting off this countdown, we have VX or Venomous Agent X. With a name like that, you know this chemical compound is no good. So this is a very deadly nerve agent that was created in the 1950s by the British military. It's so deadly that a dose as low as 10 milligrams can kill people. So this chemical can enter the body through inhalation or it can be easily absorbed into your skin. If you do come in contact with it, it will disrupt the signals between your nervous system and muscular system so that your muscles in your body will become paralyzed, including your diaphragm, stopping your ability to breathe and slowly killing you through asphyxiation. Does not sound like a pleasant way to go, that's for sure. In our ninth spot today, we have botulinum toxin. And I apologize if I pronounce any of these really confusing chemical names. Okay, don't come for me, I'm trying. This is said to be one of the most dangerous chemicals in the world. In fact, it's the most lethal poison known to man. It's so toxic that one gram of this toxin can kill more than one million people. Yes, only one gram. That is insane. Basically, if you're exposed to it, then it will paralyze your muscles and can stop your heart 
and or respiratory system from working. Funnily enough, this chemical is used in Botox. Yes, they use it because of its ability to paralyze muscles. So it was first discovered back in 1895 by a Belgian professor. So he was the first to isolate the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. I mean, I am cheating here since the substance is produced naturally, but scientists did take that bacteria and then manipulate it and then had the idea to use it for Botox. In our eighth spot, we have chlorine trifluoride. This substance was created in the 1930s by scientists Otto Roth and H. Krug. And guess what? This substance can cause anything to burst into flames on contact and the fire cannot be extinguished. Or it can cause a full blown explosion. Like it has been known to catch asbestos on fire. Asbestos is one of the most fire retardant substances in existence. So that says something right there. As a result of this, the Nazi party took great interest in this. They wanted to have their soldiers use it to melt through their enemies' bunkers. But after doing more tests on it, they found it to be very unstable and too much of a risk to take. They'd probably end up hurting themselves before hurting their enemies. Moving on to number seven, we have hydrofluoric acid. This next chemical was created by adding sulfuric acid to fluorite at a high temperature. It was discovered in 1771 by a Swedish pharmaceutical pharmaceutical chemist Carl Wilhelm Steele. He was doing tests on calcium fluoride and ended up creating this acid. This acid has been known to cause terrible burns if exposed to the skin. It literally will cause these burns in an instant. Not only that, but it's deadly if you inhale its vapors. This can irritate your respiratory system and can cause pulmonary edema. This is a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs, which can lead to heart and breathing problems. Pulmonary edema can also be fatal. In our sixth spot, we have phosgene. This is another chemical said to be one of the most dangerous in the world. It was first created in 1811 by a German Jewish chemist named Fritz Haber. He was actually given the name the father of chemical warfare fair and he's quite a controversial figure in history. That's because the creation of this led to the death of thousands during the world wars. A small concentration released into the air is enough to kill a person. So after immediate exposure, it will cause its victims to cough profusely. It will cause irritated watery eyes, blurred vision, irritation of the respiratory tract, and a burning sensation in the throat. After that, they might feel fine, but the next day they will die of choking from buildup of fluid in the lungs. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with dimethyl cadmium. This is another one of the world's most toxic chemicals. It was created in 1917 near the end of the first war. A German chemist named Erich Kraus was doing experiments on a number of chemicals and ended up creating dimethyl cadmium. This chemical is highly, highly toxic and reactive. It's also very deadly. Inhaling only a few micrograms can lead to cadmium metal poisoning, which will then lead to death. It also has very damaging effects on one's liver and kidneys. Moving on to number four, we have the piranha solution. With a name like that, you know it's gotta be scary. In fact, it gets its name because it can easily eat through organic matter. This solution is created by mixing hydrogen peroxide with sulfuric acid. So not only is it extremely dangerous to touch, but it can easily explode. And it has been known to irritate one's respiratory tract if inhaled. Both its liquids and vapors are extremely corrosive to one's skin and respiratory tract. It can burn the eyes and destroy one's mucous membranes. In our third spot, we have dimethyl mercury. This is a very dangerous and toxic chemical compound. It was created by George Buckton in 1857 by reacting methyl mercury iodine with potassium cyanide. And this created a very deadly substance. In fact, a small drop of this can lead to mercury poisoning. Take the case with chemist Karen Wetterhahn, for example. In the late 90s, Karen was studying the effects that dimethyl mercury had on living organisms. While running some tests, she dropped a bit of chemical onto her glove. What she didn't know is that it can easily permeate through her latex gloves within 15 seconds. And even a small drop is enough to cause mercury poisoning. Sadly, that's what happened and she ended up slipping into a coma before passing away 10 months later. Coming in at number two, we have serine. Serine was created in 1938 in Germany by scientists who were trying to create a stronger pesticide. In the end, they created serine. 
a very toxic nerve gas that has the ability to kill people in minutes. During initial exposure, you might experience tremors or seizures. Then soon, it will paralyze your lungs and body. It kills you through suffocation as your lungs become paralyzed. Then you'll lose control of your bodily functions and you get it, it's not pretty. As a result, this is said to be a potential weapon of mass destruction. And over the years, the government has done some pretty nasty sarin gas experiments on people. Like in 2013 with the attack on Syria that took the lives of more than 1400 people. And in our number one spot today, we have fluoroantimonic acid. This is said to be the strongest acid in the world. To give you an example of how acidic it is, it is 10 quadrillion times stronger than sulfuric acid. This acid can easily burn right through plastic and glass. If you touch it, well, it will melt the skin right off your bones. How fun is that? It was created by combining hydrogen fluoride with antimony pentafluoride. And I can't imagine how that went. Like, it can react violently to water. Heating it is dangerous and it can destroy beakers. Guess they discovered that out all through trial and error. Starting off this countdown, we have carcinogens in cosmetics. Turns out that the stuff that most of us put on our face daily is actually hazardous for our health. A couple of months ago, traces of asbestos were found in eyeshadow and concealer. Asbestos is known to cause cancer. Not only that, but talc is also found in trace amounts in eyeshadow and concealer, and lead is sometimes found in trace amounts in lipsticks and eyeliners. The worst products though are waterproof mascara, liquid lipsticks, and long wear foundation. These are the three main products found to have the strongest cancer causing properties. It's because these products are made up of forever chemicals. Forever chemicals are a group of synthetic chemicals that are used to make the products waterproof or last long. They also contain PFAs, a highly toxic fluorinated chemical, and they aren't even put on the packages as a warning, and that is scary. In our ninth spot, we have glycol ethers. Glycol ethers are another dangerous chemical found in cosmetics, as well as cleaning products and paints. Imagine that, cleaning your home, being like, ah, oh, this will be better for me. Meanwhile, well, you're putting yourself at more of a risk. Anyways, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, glycol ethers is commonly found in cleaning products, liquid soaps, and cosmetics. But they are also found in degreasers, aerosol paints, adhesives, sunscreens, inks, and dyes. Short term exposure can cause serious kidney and liver damage, along with necrosis and pulmonary edema. Long term exposure causes tremors and neurological and blood effects. So make sure to check the label when buying your products to prevent buying something with this chemical. Moving on to number eight, we have phthalates. Phthalates are chemicals used to help scents and chemicals bind together. They are found in shampoos, conditioners, perfumes, hairsprays, colognes, soaps, nail polish, you name it. They're even found in shower curtains, food packaging, and vinyl flooring. Well, it's found that exposure to this chemical can cause liver, kidney, lung, and reproductive damage. Not only that, but it can cause brain damage and lower your IQ. It's scary because we all use these products on the daily. Now, one way to avoid contact with this is to get unscented products, avoid microwaving your food in plastic, and not buying any plastic items labeled as number three, number six, or number seven. Those are the ones that contain this toxin. In our seventh spot, we have lead. Now, if you have a newer home, then you don't need to worry about this. But before 1978, houses were being painted with lead-based paint. That was before they found out how dangerous this was. Obviously, lead-based paints are banned today, but if you have an older home, you need to make sure that your walls weren't painted with it. It's said that 38 million homes in America still have lead-based paint. That is insane. Even exposure to low levels of this can cause brain and kidney damage and puts women at an increased risk of miscarriage. The hazard comes from when the paint chips off and creates lead dust that you then breathe in on the daily. In fact, this is the most common source of lead poisoning. In our sixth spot, we have antiperspirants. Nobody likes sweaty or stinky pits, which is why deodorant was invented. 
But the thing that blocks the sweat in antiperspirants is aluminum. Exposure to aluminum can cause breast cancer as well as severe memory loss. It can also cause brain disease and nervous system problems. The best way to avoid this is by looking for natural deodorants, which sucks because you're still gonna sweat but at least you won't smell bad and you're not poisoning yourself. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with polytetrafluoroethylene. Say that 10 times fast. This chemical can be found in non-stick pans, which are hella convenient, but if used wrong, they can be hella deadly. So apparently if you use your pan at high temperatures, the Teflon coating on the pan will break down and it will emit a toxic gas. When you inhale those fumes, it can cause polymer fume fever, aka Teflon flu. More serious cases of this can lead to lung damage and reproductive problems. A way to avoid this would be cooking on low heat and avoid getting your pans scratched or just use stainless steel or iron skillets instead. Coming in at number four, we have the pesticides, but we all know about this one already. Pesticides are sprayed on crops to avoid bugs from eating them. As a result, it contaminates our food, soil, and water supply which is one of the reasons why you learn to wash off your fruits and veggies before eating them. It's to wash off any residue from the pesticides. But we still end up coming in contact with them. This can cause birth defects, cancer, kidney and liver and lung damage, among other things. Some pesticides also act as an endocrine disruptor and have been proven to harm animals and humans. The people most at risk to pesticides are the young or pregnant or nursing women. In our third spot today, we have air pollution. I mean, this one is a given. Air pollution, even at low levels, has a great impact on human health. Obviously, air pollution is caused by the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, or gas. Breathing in polluted air can lead to lung disease, cancer, heart disease, or heart problems, increased hospitalizations, and premature death. It also has a negative impact on our skin as well, but you know what, that's nothing compared to heart disease or cancer. In fact, a study found that one third of deaths from stroke, lung cancer, and heart disease were due to air pollution. Like that is insane. In fact, it's about on the same page as smoke and tobacco. And it's more dangerous than the effects of having a crappy diet. It's scary because this is something that we can't control. Like we can exercise and eat healthy, but we can't control the air that we breathe in. I mean, we can, don't pollute, but still. In our second spot, we have mercury. Mercury is a naturally occurring element that is very dangerous to humans. And it's scary, but we are potentially exposed to it on the daily. For example, some fish contain mercury, so eating too much fish can actually lead to mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning symptoms can include muscle weakness, kidney problems, and brain and lung damage. Other sources of mercury are found in silver colored dental fillings, fluorescent light bulbs, and thermometers. But the light bulbs and thermometers are only a hazard if they break open. Exposure to mercury can also cause central nervous system issues, impaired vision, paralysis, and immune system complications. And in our number one spot today, we have polybrominated diaphanol ethers. Scarily enough, this chemical is found in most baby care products. Why? Well, this chemical is used as a flame retardant, aka it slows down the speed of a flame. So they're in high chairs, cribs, and strollers. So every day, your child might be exposed to this chemical. Not only that, but it's found in televisions, computers, insulation, sofas, pillows, and mattresses. Yes, the thing you lay on and sleep on daily. And mattresses contain high levels of this. The health problems associated with this chemical are brain and reproductive damage, thyroid problems, and neurological disorders. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Carolina Reaper. Oh yeah, I'm gonna throw a hot pepper on this list. Do you know what happens if you touch one of these and then accidentally make contact with one of your eyes? Eye contact, I guess, literally. It's not great, it's officially the world's hottest pepper. The Carolina Reaper is 200 times more intense than a jalapeno pepper. 
So if you ever get one of those stuck to the bottom of a nacho chip, it's like a warm surprise. Yeah, it's that times 200. If you eat one of these peppers, headaches will linger for a long time. Measuring it in Scoville heat units, it's up in the two millions. Peppers like the scorpion pepper are just underneath it. Those are two very bad ones. Now, of course, you can touch these peppers if handled properly. They add a nice spicy flavor to your meal, but when handled improperly, you're going to be patting your eyes with cloths full of milk. You're gonna be dipping your eyes and bags of milk. I got not bags, that's so Canadian, bags of milk. One user from Reddit shared their experience after barely touching the pepper and rinsing their hands with water. They said that they almost went blind. So wash your hands twice. Number nine, the blue ringed octopus. Another alien living on our planet that we all just accept as a type of fish. I watched a documentary on Netflix recently about this thing and honestly, I'm amazed. Straight up, this is my new favorite animal of all time. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in the waters of Australia and Japan, and sometimes they're not even in the water. They can walk over rocks into another part of the ocean. They have multiple brains. They use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor. They're also believed to be the only other species that dreams aside from us. Of course, changing colors while they do so to make them even more interesting. Dazzling but deadly, the blue ringed octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults. They're filled with two different types of venom. The first can kill their prey, and the other can be used as a defense, you know, spray underwater ink splash. Either way, this toxin is bad news. They don't get very large as well, so keep an eye out. Watch those little toes. Number eight, quark gluon plasma. Okay, another fun experiment that sounds like it can turn horrible at any given moment. Right after the Big Bang happened, scientists believed that there was this extremely hot goop made of all types of matter. It was all moving around at light speed. It was this liquid called quark gluon plasma. Well, the fine folks over at the Large Hadron Collider recorded the highest temperature ever recorded by humans. Created by humans, rather. They got this machine to remake that space soup and it hit 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. That's 366,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. You can try and touch this substance, but your arm will literally melt off first, so have at her. Number seven, stonefish. This next one disguises itself as a rock, so good game, guys. The stonefish is a spiny dude. Each of its 13 spines are filled with venom, so if you're taking a late night dip, watch out for rocks that blink, I guess. These fish look extremely angry, like they look deadly. At least the octopus was cute. What the hell is this guy? It's like a stone face, it's ugly. It's venom is lethal to humans, so if you're watching this and you're a human who lives in, you guessed it, Australia, you better wear steel toe boots to the beach, I guess. Stonefish don't use their venom to hunt, which is the scary part. They only shoot venom out of their spines if pressure is applied to them. It's like walking in a minefield. I'm glad I now know this, but I also wish I didn't, you know? Somewhere in the middle, like, ah, just don't tell me these things. Number six, super critical liquid. Found at the bottom of the ocean are these cracks, these openings that release the heat from inside the Earth's crust. These hot spots warm up the surrounding ocean water and it super cooks it, creating this super critical liquid. These hydrothermal vents get around 867 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around the same temperature as the surface of Venus. That's amazing. The Sisters Peak chimney located in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is considered to some as the devil's doorway and it makes sense why. Experts believe that the vents were formed during an earthquake around 20 years ago, meaning we're only seeing the beginning of this underwater supervolcano. No life can survive here at all, not even microbial. Number five, chlorine trifluoride. This next one is one of the most dangerous gases in the world, so pay attention. Chlorine trifluoride can burn your eyes and skin if you make contact. It can very well blind you, it's pretty intense. Breathing it in can cause fluids in your lungs to build up, and if you were to physically touch the liquefied gas, it would instantly cause frostbite. So either way, chlorine trifluoride is deadly. It's also colorless, and it's mainly used to blast rockets into space. It's a main component of rocket fuel and it can only be stored in fluorine metal containers. Damn it, all I have is Tupperware. We'll get them next time. Number four, liquid helium. Heading back to the Big Bang for a hot second, pun intended. Back in 2015, scientists successfully created the coldest substance on the planet. How amazing is that? They were able to chill molecules down to absolute zero, which is colder than the afterglow of the Big Bang. Recently, I mentioned the particle collider and how we're trying to speed those ones up, but this time around, we're slowing them right down. A team at MIT chilled gas molecules of sodium potassium and they got them down to 500 nanocalvins, AKA minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. This liquid is colder than you can imagine, even your ex's heart. Number three, strychnine. This next one could have been the reason Alexander the Great met his fate. Odorless and white, this crystalline powder was once used to treat many ailments back in the day. 
But back in the day, they also used to prescribe radiated water to, you know, help your golf swing. So now strychnine is used mainly as a pesticide. This deadly substance naturally comes from a plant called Strychos nuxflamica, commonly found in Southern Asia and Australia. Always Australia, always. Strychnine can take down the strongest of humans. Like I said, even Alexander the Great got hit with this one. What happens is after it's inhaled or ingested or touched or in involved in any way, the chemical that controls nerve signals get all messed up. It's like an off switch for your muscles. It's terrible. Your body will immediately start experiencing spasms, leading to your muscles tiring out to a point where you can't even breathe. Your neck and back will arch uncontrollably. That sounds like the worst thing imaginable. My neck too, imagine that thing would wrap around my body twice. Number two, ancient colors. Here's a fun one for you history buffs. Throughout history, many ancient civilizations used creative ways to color their clothing or to paint buildings. Nowadays, we can pick the exact shade we want to fill in the family room, but back then, they barely knew what they were messing with like white lead, for example. Around 2,500 years ago, humans produced this color. It's one of the earliest examples of pigmentation, which is a little fun fact. It's mentioned back in the third century by philosophers. You create it by mixing metallic lead with vinegar, strong vinegar. The fine lead shavings dissolve in this vinegar, and then it's dried, sifted, mixed with more vinegar, and then dried again in the sun. European painters used this lead white, but once it's inhaled, ingested, or even makes direct skin contact, you experience muscle pains and spasms, blood pressure would sky rocket and you'd have extreme headaches. But your clothes would look great. And finally, number one, Hutchinsonite. This last one for our part four is just a deadly mashup of minerals. It's awesome. This rare, beautiful, badass of a gem is a hybrid. It's thallium, arsenic, and lead all rolled up and pushed into this ball of nope. If you come into contact with it, you can go bald. Yeah, straight up. Of course, this is number one, a rock that makes you go bald. What am I, Lex Luthor? That's insane. Yeah, the thallium can induce male pattern baldness, and if you're wondering where such a dangerous mood gem can be hiding, well, it's commonly found in those deadly hydrothermal vents that I mentioned earlier. It all connects.